Before we begin, remember to smash that like button, subscribe if you haven't, and share this with anyone who you think needs to hear this message. Also, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button, become a member, and get access for free to the exercise performance course where I teach you to squat, bench, deadlift, shoulder press, do pull-ups, and dips. Not only that, but you will also get the audiobook of the book, of Puck, narrated by me, and also the exclusive podcast for members, The Coffee Cast, where we do weekly Q&As. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. And begin we shall. You're early, two minutes, let me be. Most people are like 15 minutes late, I am two minutes early, because I can't. So, what is the planning today? Well, some of you might have seen my uh, thingamajig on uh, YouTube because you can post things. The image I posted, and most of you probably don't know what it is. There are a few who do. I think Ryan, Chesty, maybe Rob, maybe, are a couple of the few who know what it is. Now, I ain't saying I started narrating something new. I'm just saying. Now, what I'm narrating right now will be a surprise. Although for the members, I might be uploading something special soon. And if you become a member, you will now, as of today, as of last week, actually, you can get access to my narration of the Book of Poke audiobook for free. When you become a member by clicking the join button at the bottom right of your screen. Um, we're going to do Corporate Land Part 3 today. How to kill it in your job interview. After that, if there's time left, let's geek out. There's been plenty of things going around, like good things, even like House of the Dragon, which is actually a pretty awesome show. It really is an awesome show. Narrating Romeo and Juliet. Alex, I wish I could. Wait, is Romeo and Juliet public domain? Because then I might have an idea. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, dear. Oh, my. The Manosphere presents Romeo and Juliet. <laughs> and then, like, every content creator is a character. But okay, uh, hopes and dreams, people. Hopes and dreams. Um, where are you? Wo ist das Tab von Corporate Land? Oh, da ist es. Da ist es? No. Meine Deutsch ist nicht sehr gut, aber mein Nederlands will. Das das schild. Uh, let's go. Paul, this one is for you. Corporate land. Corporate land. How to kill it in your job interview. TLDR. Oh, by the way, this is by uh, Vasilai Zaitsev, also known as Uncle Vaz, and the original... Oh, it's it said got it. Oh, he got it. He got it. Now, I ain't saying... I ain't saying, I'm not promising anything. I'm just saying, I'm just saying. By the way, for people wondering why I keep doing that, it's like, why do you always do that? Where it's like, you always say you're not doing something, but you're not denying you're doing it either. Now there's a little psychological thing. So apparently, if you're going to do something, stop talking about it and do it, which is also a great reference to the movie, The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. But... When I start doing things, I do get excited about it and I do want to share it. The thing is, I won't fully admit to it so that people can't um, call me out on it either. Where it's like, well, I, I never I never denied I didn't do it, but I never said I did do it either. So it, I leave it in the middle kind of thing. But I may or may not have started some uh, a large project by Ironwood. May or may not. That's how this channel got started. 
Did I ever tell you guys that story? Real quick, before we begin. Did I ever tell you guys that story, how this channel got started? It involved that same phrase. So this is back in the day of the Red Man Group. Red Man Group were, back in the day, Ryan, Rolo, John, Carl, Rich Cooper, and uh, what you call him? The the um, dead eyed camera guy. There was an episode. Sorry, backtrack a bit. A lot of guys in the chat back then kept asking the guys, "Which book should I read? Which book contains this? Which book contains that? I have read X, Y, and Z. What should be on the reading list now?" And back then, I had this huge bookcase behind me. And I had read practically everything that was ever recommended back then. Now, um, because of that, I thought to myself, you know what? I'm going to start a channel talking about those books. I'm going to be anonymous, blah, 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 blah. This started out as just because I had my, my fitness trainer job, things like that. I had what I wanted. But I also wanted to do a bit more online where it's like, well, people are blue pill. And I knew a lot about the red pill stuff, but I had nobody to talk to about that. So then, yeah, you kind of go online. Red pill reads, exactly. Damn, see, how long have you been here? <laughs> That's a long time ago. I should bring those back. But um, I DM'd Ryan. Ryan and I were already talking back then. And uh, I'm like, is there a review on 48 Laws of Power I might have missed? He's like, no, why? And I tell him, hey, remember show X, Y, and Z where you said when you have an idea, don't talk about it, do it. Because when you talk about it, you get the same chemical reaction in the brain as if you were actually doing it. He's like, damn, you do pay attention. I'm like, yes. Couple of weeks later, I send him my first video, which was an hour and a half long review of the 48 Laws of Power, which I went by all of them. And he just shot that out there, and my channel grew within a year to a thousand. And right now, it's doing okay ish. Like we're almost at 3K. It's not a large channel, but it's a sufficient channel. Way too long for my own good. But hey, that's a good thing. If you're here since Red Pill Reads, that means I've grown as a channel where it's like, hey, he got better because the guys are still here. I mean, can you imagine? We got a couple of those guys. Like Phil Henry was here um, very early. Paul Potato was here very early. Danny Arnold was here pretty early as well. Uh, Alex came a bit later when I started uh, co collaborating with Cappy. So yeah, that's kind of how all of that started. But that's why I never fully admit what I'm doing. Because like with Book of Pook, the reason... It took three years is not just because other things came up. At a certain point, I was just bored with it. Even though I had promised a lot of guys where it's like, yeah, yeah it's going to happen. It's going to happen. Now, it did happen eventually. And all the guys who wondered about it then have it. At least I hope. Because it's available now. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I've been here for like 10 minutes this morning and I'm already picking up stuff. Never caught that before about the brain chemicals being the same from talking about and doing something. Yeah. Oh, damn. You've been here pre-face reveal? That must have been shocking. <laughs> it's like, holy shit. <laughs> I remember the first time Ryan saw my face. He's like, you're not Irish? It's like, no. Why? Why would I? <laughs> it's like, What? <laughs> <laughs> I I thought you looked more Irish. It's like, thanks? I guess. <laughs> oh, dear. But yeah, Tom, I got that from, uh, I got that from Ryan. 
Uh, love when you start with let's begin. Yeah. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. And the thing is, we are now getting into corporate land. You guys have been waiting long enough. This is not like a show with Charlie where he doesn't show up. Love you, Charlie. <laughs> I had to get that in there. Now, Charlie's great. Is Cultivate Crypto still going on? I hope I'm not double streaming. No one has that on brand. Oh, thank you. Thank you, Car. Car Labrate. Huh. Let's see. Okay, let's go. <clears throat> How to kill it in your job interview. TLDR, a guy who interviews candidates, tells you what he looks for in job interviews and how not to fuck yours up. Based on the reaction to my last two corporate land threads, I thought this might be useful for red pill men navigating the interview process. So apparently Uncle Vass was the guy who hired people, like maybe a grade above HR. The related posts are the previous ones, how to handle salary negotiations and a rat race survival guide for new rats. So <clears throat> introductions. So here is my view from the higher side of the desk. What I will tell you will have general application, but I work in commodities. So for tech, as an example, some things will be different, I'm sure. This, like all my articles and posts, is the product of my own meandering experience and may be worth what you paid for it, free on the internet. <laughs> People get fucking weird in job interviews, and I mean interviewers. They ask weird ass fucking questions, pose it bizarre scenarios, oh yeah, and attach massive overemphasis to things that never would in the real world. I had this one guy ask me, no, I have it back. I have it back. I got it back. Uh... Oh, yeah, this one job interview. So I told you guys last time that every time I had a job interview and it was with, like, a chick, that always went well. And when it was with a guy, that always went wrong for some odd reason. But the guys always ask me the weirdest questions where it's like, okay, so I'm not starting out with the weirdest one. But one of the weirdest ones was, like, I like this movie, Back to the Future, and what I want to know from you, Jack, is what if you had a DeLorean? And where would you see yourself in five years? And I so hate that question. I hate that question. You know why? Because a lot can change in a year. And in five years... Who knows where I will be? Yeah, but where do you want to be? It's like, well, I don't want to be worse off than I am now. That's one. But what they want to hear is, well, I have a high function in this company after sucking corporate dick for months on end. That's what they want to hear. But I'm not giving them that. It's like, no. I can't even remember what I said. And I think I was snarky or something. Where it's like, ah, fuck off. I don't like you. But okay, the weirdest one I ever had. The weirdest, weirdest question I ever had in uh, a job interview. Go away. Is this. What if a co-worker bullies you? I am not kidding. Mind you, across from me, three guys with bits, tits, and muffin tops. While I'm sitting across from them in a button-up shirt that kind of needs to have the top buttons up, otherwise it's too tight, it, which is a horrible dress thing, but okay, not too tight, but you get what I mean. It was slim fit, so you could see that I lift kind of thing. And... The guy asked me, what would you do if a coworker bullies you, you know? Like, he's just messing with you the entire day. And I'm like, what dumb ass fucking question is this? Like, what? 
And I look at him and I go, you know, if somebody's life is so terrible that they feel the need to mess with co-workers, I have already won. So I'm not going to do anything about that. Plus the fact, isn't it the manager's job to like uh, manage like corporate vibe or uh, what do you call it? Environment or whatever. Have a friendly family environment. Isn't that his job? He's like, really? Would you not do anything? I'm like, well, just because you can doesn't mean you should as I got taught in kickboxing. And the guy just looks at me like, what? I'm like, hey, but if you want me to go three rounds with your co-workers, I'm fine with that too, you know? <laughs> because I was just so up to here with this corporate bullshit where I was like, okay, I'm not getting this job, you know what? Fire all forces. Just boom. Like, fuck you. <laughs> it's like, what? If a co-worker bullies you, what is this, high school? If a co-worker bullies you? Not kidding. He actually asked that. It's like, what the hell would you want me to say? <laughs> oh, you know what? I'll just go to the teacher and tell on him. It's like, oh my God. <sighs> <sighs> yeah, that was the dumbest fucking thing ever. <laughs> oh my God, Tom. Not sure how things are over there, but they consider banter and rivering coworkers bullying. Yeah, but it depends on who you do it, you know. Like, don't do it with the female coworkers because then it's like, ah, oh, you're my beefies. Unless you're hot, you can get away with a lot of shit, which is true. Which is just true. I had a girl grab me coffee once. That was, I love that. <laughs> Guys, if this keeps going, we're not getting through the post because I keep remembering story. Oh, good one, Paul. Oh, wow. Oh, I should have come back with that. I stand corrected. I stand corrected. That question is a red flag. Red flag. So you mean bullying happens here? Oh, good one. That is a good one. Damn it. And I didn't think of that. Here goes my hothead. It's like, ah, oh, shit. Shit test. No, I failed. And then the guy threw the rational meal at me. It's like, that was a shit test. You should have responded with a Muse Mastery or a Green Amplify. F you. Don't do it with Canadian men either. <laughs> Fair warning. <laughs> what? Like, call a main a mullet? <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Now, we're going to read. Okay, we're going to read. Sit down, children. Sit down and listen. <clears throat> they ask weird-ass fucking questions, posted bizarre scenarios, and attach massive overemphasis to things that never would in the real world. I never understood why. Probably I should have taken more psych classes. What to do before? Tailor your resume to the company. Don't overdo it but tweak it here and there. That said, some people cannot cope with a resume that is not chronological. I have no idea why, but that's the case. Research the company and do more than just go to our homepage. Listen to the last few earning calls and read the last few 10 cues. I mean, don't bother if you don't really give a shit about the gig, but nobody does this. So when someone says, I listened to your last earnings call and I was impressed, blown away, scared shitless by. <clears throat> now, probably for you Americans and you Canadians, you know what that is, but I have no idea what that is, what they call that here in the Netherlands. Research the interviewer. Many folks are easily accessible online, such as LinkedIn. That's fair game. Don't make it awkward by discussing what a big fan you are of their daughter's junior high soccer team. <laughs> Don't do that. Don't do that. But, guys, this goes back to the story I told you last time. Remember when I had to go to the uh, the, the thingamajig? What's that called again? The, the pre-juvie thing. I know. But that my dad talk to the guy about 
some village for an hour and then he got what he wanted? Well, that's the same thing in job interviews. You don't go there for the job, but you go there for the person. You want to get the know the person. Like, hey, who are you? Like my former boss, he was in the Navy. I'm like, you were in the Navy? And he had this like sailboat on his uh, on his um uh, on his bookcase there. Like, oh, you're you're into ships? I'm into ships as well. He's like, oh really? Like, oh, what kind of ships? And blah, blah blah. I'm like, well, not as modern as these, and blah blah blah. And I told him about the Lego ships and things like that. He said, Really? That's pretty awesome. You got pictures, I showed him photos, and I'm like Oh, uh, what got you into sailing and blah, blah, blah. And, and at the end of the interview, he's like, well, do you have any questions? I'm like, yeah, when can I start? And he's like, oh, I'll tell you this afternoon. Don't worry. I'm like, okay, cool. <laughs> uh, moving on. Best days. If you have any input into the weekday chosen by your interview, avoid Mondays and Fridays. Mondays, everybody is busy as fuck. I have three standing meetings on Monday. Sorry about that. That was absolutely horrible. Um, excuse me. Uh, on Monday, the last goddamn thing I want to do is interview someone. The problem is that HR sits around with their thumbs up their asses all day, every day. So they don't think about that shit. I'm perfectly fine with Fridays, personally. I like to avoid afternoons because I come into the office for interviews and I hate the commute. Other people have checked out completely, so best to avoid. If you can pick a time, shoot for 10 a.m. or 2 p.m. We do all-day interviews, so no need to avoid lunches because we're either bringing it in or taking you to lunch. Clean up your social media. I don't give a shit how you spend your free time, what your political views are, mostly if you're a freakazoid who can't shut up about politics, I'm not going to like being around you, or that you pop bottles and get high on the weekend. I'm not going to go looking. You know who is? HR and their petty little fucks. What to do during? Mm-hmm. Show up 50 minutes before and be prepared. Yeah, something I always do too. Be polite to the receptionist. I'm friendly with ours. And if you're a dick to her, she'll tell me. Stay calm. Just like with women, think abundance mentality. Maybe you get the gig, maybe you don't. Take your best shot at it, and it comes out how it comes out. Learn from the experience. I got out of school during a recession, and I went on a shit ton of interviews. I got to the point where I was more relaxed and better prepared than basically every interviewer I met with. It's okay if you bring a leather portfolio. Don't bring a briefcase. You haven't earned it yet. Have at least three to five extra copies of your resume with you, as well as a few copies of your reference sheet. I doubt anyone will ask, but if they do, you look smooth. Also, sometimes I get sent in to interview people I would not otherwise. I might not have been given your stats. Oh, and don't have a stupid email address. <laughs> Also, like the yippity dippity dipshit dot com ish, where it's like, yeah, it's like, uh, you don't want to do that. You don't want to do that. Uh, there we go. Yeah. And this seems obvious, but I've seen some weird ones. Again, I don't judge, but HR does. Yes. When we meet, shake my hand. Your handshake should be firm, but please, Jesus, God, do not be one of those guys who feels like he has to try and crush my hand and dry. It's okay if you have to surreptitiously serip wipe your hand on your trousers first. I prefer that to a clammy handshake. Three pumps, no more, and then clean release. Jesus Christ. 
When this has mostly gone away, there used to be rules for shaking a lady's hand, which I still observe. I had one woman call me this, call me on this in an interview and explain my rationale, and she was fine with it. She was a lady lawyer, and I think her icy black heart actually warmed up slightly, still frozen, of course, but moved off of zero Calvin. It's totally okay that you wore a suit. I will be in jeans and a polo and loafers without socks on a Monday. If you express discomfort about it, I will tell you it's okay to take your suit coat off if you want. It's not a trap. I don't really give a shit whether you do or not. I'm not inherently a mean guy, and a lot of folks are nervous in interviews, and I prefer them calm. I also like to put people at ease, so they think, hey, this guy is cool, I can tell him anything. And then either A, show me they are cool, two, win, or B, fuck up by telling me shit they shouldn't, so I can ding them and not waste my time or tears. Try and maintain good eye contact, not the no blinking, yes, I'm a total choke fiend kind, <laughs> but the normal good kind. While I do not overtly look at, for body language, I will register subconsciously. Uh, oh, Matt Randall, if you don't have to listen to the earnings call, you can pull the financial online and say don't read them. Nice. Impressed by your E-B-I-T-D-A. What does that mean, my friend? E-B-I-T-D-A. I do not know what that means. Um, only accept my offer of water or coffee or whatever if you can drink it without shaking like you have a cerebral palsy. Unless you actually have cerebral palsy, then it's okay. If you have to use the can, that's okay too. But try to do that beforehand. If you're in an all-day interview, the best time is either at lunch or between interview sessions, unless you have explosive diarrhea, in which case I will totally understand. And I will be your blocking back on the way of the restroom. If only so, I will be in front of you and not behind. We are going to start by talking about what I want to talk about, which is you. I will always lead with, tell me about yourself because people have no filters these days and will say stuff they shouldn't. Okay, this is so weird. But the last job interview I had, so I sat there, I'm like, good morning, my name is... But um, I sat there, blah, 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 blah. And the guy just goes, well, good morning, thank you for being here. Let me tell you about myself first. It's like, okay. He didn't ask me anything about me even once. Like, he went on a 20-minute story about himself. Now, I am not an HR person, nor have I ever hired somebody. But in my experience, isn't it supposed to be the goal that you get to know the guy who is having the interview? Where it's like, hey, you're coming to work with us. We want to know more about you. It's like... Uh huh. But he just went on 20 minutes about himself. I'm like, okay, uh, good to know, I guess. And then, like, two minutes on, oh, by the way, who are you? Well, I'm uh, okay, more uh, enough about you, more about me. It's like, okay, sure, tell me about you. How's your wife? I uh, have a hunch. <laughs> Some other tips be honest. If you lie, I will figure it out and it will sink you even if we otherwise would have hired you. Be concise. I'm on the right side of the desk to tell long stories, or I seem to lose the point, but then tie it all up with a nice bow on top at the end. You're not. Don't be abrupt. Don't make me lose the plot and have to go hunting for it. Have examples. If you tell me you're awesome, I want you to prove it. If I ask you to walk me through your resume, be able to do it, and also tell me some things, skills, anecdotes that aren't on your resume but are relevant. Show me that you are employable. One of the best ways you can do that is to tell me how you would go about doing the job that you are interviewing for. It's rare that a candidate does this. Usually, they're more passive. When you're more experienced, you can lay this awesomeness grande down. Grenade, sorry, awesomeness grenade down. 
Let me tell you how I would do this job. I've done all parts something similar to it before. My skills are portable. If you get it right, it's a total win. Remember, though, people get massive OCD about shit people say in interviews. So you may need to couch it. So you may need to couch it in terms of assert ascertaining the firm's risk tolerances corporate culture. I'm sorry, Yanko Vaz. What to do after? Unclench. It's over. You can relax now. Right after you send a thank you letter to everyone you interviewed with. You can print them up, but try to change the middle paragraph at least. Paragraph one. Thank you for the opportunity to interview with Spacely Spr Sprockets, Perfect Booty Gentlemen's Club, The Strike and Spare. Paragraph two. I enjoyed our discussion of the aerodynamic nature of Sophia Vergara's tits. <laughs> <sighs> None of you is going to Google this, by the way. I'm just saying. I know my audience. My audience is made out of pure, kind-hearted gentlemen who would never look her up. Mm -hmm. Give me something to work with. I can build report with a human. Yeah, exactly. It's Tom is right. Like, Jesus, guys. It's the same as dating. And... I'm not sorry when I'm saying this right now. But there is a manosphere where it's like, hey, guys, learn to socialize. You know what my biggest problem with the manosphere is? There's no woman sphere. You wouldn't believe the amount of dates I've been on where I'm kind of like, you're a social retard, aren't you? It's like... And like... They were into you, but they, because, well, ended up as I wanted. But, like, verbally and things like that, they're just, like, you know social skills, right? And they, they barely, uh, Sophie Vergara, where is she from? Mind you, Uncle Vass is, like, 30 years older than I am. So, I don't know, these boomer women. <laughs> Let's see. Paragraph three, I think I could be an asset to your firm because questions like guns, they should be treated like they're loaded. Tell me about yourself. As I noted, I will ask this as an opener because people offer up info they wouldn't otherwise. I also do this if I'm coming into the interview cold, which sometimes happens. What do you think about our company? I don't really give a shit what you know about our company. This is the equivalent of a shit test. It's not even difficult. Just visit the fucking website. That said, that said, sorry. If you haven't, I know to ding you because you're either stupid or lazy. Research earnings calls, quarterly reports, and blog posts. That will impress the hell out of me. Why should I hire you? Being able to count off a bunch of reasons with relevant examples is a fucking home run. See discussions further down. Tell me a joke. Really? This is a curveball question, designed to see how you handle weirdness, apparently. I was asked this once, and I happened to come up with one off the top of my head, and it worked out fine. I wouldn't do it to a candidate, but some people will, particularly old guys who think they're way funnier than they actually are. Don't we know a couple of those, don't we? If you've ever been in a job interview, you know damn well what I mean. Do you want the job? This is another old guy question. They're trying to see if you will betray a lack of commitment by equo... By equivocating. Thank you. Oh, modern fa oh, modern family. Oh, yes, I know who she is. Thank you. Tell me about how you manage projects, time. Maybe you have a better way to do it than I do. I keep a work list. I used to have a whiteboard and I would go up on that. And later, I just kept a file on my PC. 
Just show me you can manage time and are not a fuckhead. For problem-solving questions, think out loud. The sort of left-field question for me problems sometimes come up. How many dogs are there in the United States? Who the fuck knows? And how is it relevant? But rather than thinking for 45 seconds and blurting out an answer, say something like, well, the population is 300 million, and let's assume three people per household on average. That's 100 million households. And let's assume that 40% of those households have dogs. Sure, there's 40 million dogs, but some dog owners have more than one dog. So let's say 1.8 dogs per household, which gives a figure of 72 million dogs. I don't know how the hell we got there. I never ask these type of questions, but sometimes you get them. What is your biggest weakness? Uh, I hate this question. My biggest weakness is that I don't know my weakness. Come the fuck on. Do people actually ask this question anymore? And whatever you say, don't say, I'm a perfectionist. I would ding you for that. If you use that honesty joke that's been floating around recently, I would at least respect you way more. Redheads would also be acceptable, but dangerous. <laughs> well, my biggest weakness is, you know, black stockings. I can't help them. It's like, I'm sorry. Like thin, big, titted chicks in black stockings. Like, oh no. My one weakness. No, Batman. Please don't. Please don't, Batman. Not the, the thin, big titted chicks in black stockings. Not them. So how to answer? Well, lead with a strength, then discuss a weakness. For example, I'm a deal guy. I'm good at building rapport and very good at getting people to do what I want them to do in negotiations. You know what I suck at? Regulatory bullshit. I would rather watch old people fuck or stay at home chewing aluminum foil and learning about the metric system. So here's what I say. I'm a deal guy. I'm very good at getting to agreements. I need to improve on the regulatory side of things. I feel the opportunity here as a chance to do just that because I can say this and make it sound believable because it's true. And everywhere I would ever possibly work is going to have a compliance department. So all I have to do is be smart enough to spot an issue and walk it over to them. Incidentally, the compliance folks where I work love me because I set the land speed record for reporting reportable shit to them. Not because I give a shit, because a lot of regulars are total bullshit. But because I want it to be not my problem, sue me. In actuality, I'm not really quite that lazy. And I used to know a lot about the FCPA and the UK Bribery Act back when that was an important one to me. They're both largely stupid and overreaching, but you know what? Violating them can get you jail time, and I'm allergic to prison, so I comply like a motherfucker, and then go back to making deals. And don't get me started on FACTA, FATCA, which should be called FUCK YEAH, because that's what it's about. <laughs> How long is this one? Oh, what did I start? Oh, what did I start? Questions! You should ask me. Why should you hire me? I haven't asked you this. This is a killer question for you to ask me. The more reasons you can count off your fingers, the better I like it. Done correctly, this is a showstopper. I've had interviews when I was the candidate. Tell me they dug this question. The next one also. What you will close with. Based on our discussion today, is there anything about my candidacy that you perceived as a weakness? Is there anything I can provide a fuller discussion of? Here's why this question is awesome. Either A, there's nothing they perceive as a weakness, in which case they hear themselves say that, or B, there's something and you get to address it and get your side of the story out. Question, tell me why you withdrew for two semesters. A, my father died, and I had to go run the business for a year, just like Jimmy Stewart in It's a Wonderful Life. The board voted down Mr. Potter, but only if I stayed and ran the building and loan. He's not wrong, though. Like, this is where um, you get 
um, where you get the advantage. Hey, good morning, Green Leader. Like, building rapport, Tom just mentioned it, where it's like, you ask them questions as well. At the end of the interview, they ask you, like, do you have any questions? I always end off with, when can I start? Because it's cheeky. But also, well, what were your thoughts of the interview? What would you like to have heard that you didn't hear, perhaps? Blah, 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 blah. Was there anything that stood out to you or maybe you would like to know more of? Like, even though they said, we don't have any further questions, show the initiative that you consider them. Kind of thing. Moving on. Uh, secrets of the temple. We will talk about you. If you show you are fucking weird in any attackable way, bad B.O. Pick your nose in front of us. Something else douchey. It will be discussed. So best behavior and use your indoor voice. Sometimes I try to hire women. I really do. And not just the hot ones with big tits. And by try, I mean a straight up basis. But they managed to fuck up the interviews at alarming rates. And when we find one we can make an offer to, they can't make up their minds. This happens no matter what. In one instance, the woman in question was literally the last person in her department at a company that had just filed for bankruptcy. Not only is the writing on the wall, it's on the floor and ceiling and it's large fucking print. But she couldn't put it together. Another one actually had the temerity to ask us to keep the job open for her for six months. If I understand, if you got a, I understand if you've got a couple of other interviews you're going on, but six fucking months. Sorry, princess, we're not going to hold the job for you while you shop for a better offer. Oh, and you know who is hardest on women candidates? Other women. As I mentioned in a different corporate land post, I had to drop into a HR to pick up a copy of the interview schedule for a candidate. And the HR chicks went off on the woman's choice of shoes for the interview. Like I would possibly give a shit. I really care about two things. First, can you do the fucking job? Or am I going to have to continuously correct your stupid mistakes? Second, are you going to be a team player or a whiny bitch? We don't need to be best buddies, but I need to be able to count on you to do your job and not be a tool. I go with my gut. My instincts are finely tuned. I trust them. My armor bears the scars of many an incident war. In turn, in turn, in turn assign war. And I am a goddamn survivor. I am the fucking honey badger of corporate land, only without the gay guy doing a voiceover of my daily activities. I feel attacked. <laughs> sorry. No, not sorry. Once I was the only person out of 10 of 12 who dinged a guy. I didn't like him. I mean, he seemed nice enough, but there was something about him. Anyway, for whatever reason, the head of HR wanted to plow the road for him, and she offered me the chance to change my vote to a yes. I declined. Four months later, we fired him for trying to punch out two vice presidents at a party. In fairness, we also fired two other guys for being drunk and disorderly, but they didn't show up at work the next day, still drunk, to continue the fight. That's got to be a tough one to explain to your wife and in-laws later. If you are a social justice warrior, I will never fucking hire you. Not much to worry about in TRP, but I mention it anyways. Last thing I want is to have to listen to some twat drone about her political views. I love how he says her here, because this this is just... Uh, we all know. We all know. We have an inter... We, have an intern like that, and I can barely stand her. 
she has this idea that she is entitled to be included in every conversation everyone has, and we're supposed to gape in wonder at her stupid ideas. <sighs> anyway, this is why I love gender studies or oppression study degrees. They are big, giant fucking signs that say, don't hire me, I am a fucking loser. I don't care if you're a double Ivy or an MA in France, in French from Stanford besides. Oh, uh, if you're a double Ivy with an MA in French from a Stanford besides, if I get the slightest whiff that you are an SJW, I will ding you. I will find a way to do it, sir, a pity. Word. surreptitiously. Sorry about that. I will find a way to do it surreptitiously if I have to, but you will never darken my door again. Happily, social justice warriors have stupid degrees and experience that is off point, so it's not difficult. Also, they are more likely, in my estimation, to sue the firm because they got their widely fee wings hurt. Their widow feelings hurt somehow because they overheard guys talking about poon or they never got promoted because they suck at their job. Good luck. And the floor is open for questions. And this is about the handshake things and blah, blah, blah. Oh, uh, rules for shaking a female's interviewer's hand. This is an old school rule and most modern business women aren't going to mind. However, I always wait for the woman to extend her hand. Why? Back in the older days of covered wagons, or at least back before color TV, the thought was that if you offered your hand to a lady to shake, she might not want to shake your hand. That will put her in an uncomfortable position of either an unwanted touch. Women were previously thought to be delicate flowers during both the Victorian and Reagan eras, or of refusing and looking like a, a gunt or embarrassing you. So I wait. And when she puts her hand out first, I am also clued into whether she is offering the dainty lady shake, palm parallel to the floor and gently take her fingers, or the standard man shake. And that was corporate land, how to kill it in your job interview. <laughs> Subreptisement. Is that so? Subreptisement. Thank you, Avid. And uh, now that everybody is here and we just had the uh, post, please smash the like button and subscribe if you haven't. And uh, yeah, thanks for being here. And if you want, if you want to support the channel, you can click the join button and you will get the, my version of the Book of Book audiobook for free. I will leave this here. The join button is in the uh, bottom right of your screen, like there, there, next to the subscribe button. So let's see, what is the chat talking about? Mm. <laughs> Why would you want to work for the Empire of Nothing? A very good question, Greenlight. A very good question. Oh, speaking of that, um, speaking of that, I don't need to work for the Empire of Nothing anymore, but the monthly consultation course is closed right now. But if you want to be updated on when there is a spot for you for the monthly consultation course, get on my email newsletter where you will get the exercise performance course for free and you will be updated on when there is a spot left for the monthly consultation group. Okay, now I've pretty much told you about everything. Yes. I wonder how handshakes have changed during the last three years. Oh, remember what I told you about like the guy who asked me, like, what if you were picked on at work? He didn't want to shake my hand. He gave me an elbow. Where that stupid thing during like the coof, where it's like, you rub elbows together so you won't spread the disease. It's like that, that bundle of sticks thing. Don't worry, Susan. I will stay on YouTube. But um, immediately then I knew, like, this is not going to happen. And it's like, 
I expect certain things. Okay, covert contract, maybe. But I expect a certain level of decency when I walk into a company. And a handshake is one of them. I had a girlfriend once, my last LTR. And she was, like, funnily enough, she was one of those, like, boss babes everybody hates on. But she would just melt when she was with me, which was such a strange contrast to me. It was like I saw her at work once and she was like killing it. And then I showed up and to me it was like, hi, babe. Oh. And then like back into work, like, why hasn't this been done yet? Why hasn't that been done yet? Blah, 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 blah. Why haven't you? And she just scolded them. And I just stood there like, oh, hello. Hmm. Interesting. He's like, guys I work with are such pansies, blah, blah, blah. I'm like, hmm. Good to know. She's like, oh, no, don't worry. <laughs> but she even mentioned the handshakes. This was so strange. Because, like, the first time I met her, she's like, we'll meet there and there. And weirdly enough, like, she opened the door, she stood there. And she immediately, like, reached out her hand. She's like, hi, I'm X, Y, and Z. And I, well, I'm like, okay, sure, that's how we do it, and fine. Like, hi, I'm Jack. And later on, she said, she's like, you know what I found attractive the first time I saw you? I'm like, what? You had a firm handshake. I find it so repulsive when guys have a weak handshake. It's like, huh, that's interesting. That's very interesting. Okay. Good to know, I guess. But yeah, she was one of those who focused on that. Like she was switched on in business. Say whatever you want, but she was. I hope she's doing well. Last time I checked, she was a divorced single mom. Yeah. <sighs> the baitization of coworkers. Well, Matt, I have to disagree with you. I get what you're saying, but a lot of guys don't show up. They don't show up. And what I mean by that is they're there physically, but not mentally. Like they show up as like, oh, I'm here. It's like, uh, what's that called again? Uh, damn you, English. Oh, yeah, presence. Right? They were present, and that's it. But they weren't doing anything. They weren't active. They weren't um, assertive or whatever. Presentism. Is that the word? And she had to, like, step up kind of thing to get things rolling. So yeah, like I can't I couldn't blame her for it. Like most guys are fucking wimps. I'm sorry, but like the top 20% isn't that hard to reach. True alpha males don't touch other men. <laughs> it isn't gay until <laughs> until thumbs touch. It's like how's it? I was invited to a devil's triangle a while back. I'm glad I refused. <laughs> Not really, though, but if you were in Digital Ryan's chat, you know what I'm talking about. It was it maybe last week or something? It was pretty fun. We should do a show together, all three of us. I'm like, devil's triangle. No fucking way. <laughs> oh, it was funny. But yeah, so Matt, I kind of have to disagree with you on that one. But I know what you mean. The thing is, a lot of guys are already beta-tized. Because a lot of people don't do what they like. Like, I am now, and I'm very, 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 very thankful that I made it. Where it's like, yes, I have made my expertise valuable to others. So I don't have to work for others anymore. I work for myself now which I'm very happy with. Every now and then I do a morning shift somewhere and I'm fine with that. But a majority of men is already like meek. As in, 
I go home, I watch football, I drink my beer and blah, 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 and that's it. And actually, today I wanted to do a show on why you will never be ripped, which will be on Thursday. Monday, Tuesday, yeah, Thursday. Avid, are you doing this on purpose? Not joking, by the way, because now, now I'm actually wondering, are you doing this one on purpose? Because that is the first 10 minutes of this show today. When did I get into this space? Although that will be um, more of a how I got into the space. When is 2000? When did my YouTube channel start? It was in January. I believe we're coming up on the... Uh, I believe we're coming up on the third year anniversary. Uh, let's see. Where can I see that? Channel started. Channel started. And mine canal. Really? Cool. November 2018. So that's when I got the username. And when did I start uploading? Let's see. We had one of the concierge at one of the condimiums. I worked at that was a female social justice warrior. She had one day went and put up the bathroom size that said both the restrooms were non-gender. We told her she can't do that because the building is a private residence called a medium high rise. She threatened to make it an harassment issue. So one day when she was going to the women's room, the facility manager followed her and the proceedings to go to the bathroom right next to her stall. She actually had the audacity to put up an argument. Uh, yeah, she got herself canned. As she sure heard. Uh, videos sort on look YouTube why are you being a bitch to me in your search engine bitch to me two years two years three years yeah three years ago is the date there yeah, 23rd of January, 2019. <laughs> so yeah, that is almost four years ago. Almost. It's been a wild ride. I'm probably doing something wrong, by the way, because my channel is like only, uh, what was it? Uh, 2,696. Nice. <laughs> subscribers but oh well i like it i like it mm -hmm, mm -hmm. there we go what else is new uh, 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 uh. there we go there we go off topic but netherlands forehead maxing oh you oh you uh, something about the Netherlands as an easy group in the World Cup. Lucky weed smokers. Yeah, man. When was the last time the Netherlands won? I have no idea when that was. When was the last time the Netherlands won the World Cup? No idea. But hey, guys, we're dropping off a bit. I am uh, going to take my leave. Again. If you want to be updated on when a spot is open for the monthly consultation group, get on my email newsletter where not only will you be updated on when there is a spot open for the monthly consultation group, but you will also get the exercise performance course for free uh, because right now the monthly consultation group is closed. So if you want to be updated on that, get on my email newsletter and you will be informed when that is open again. Interesting though, show. Thank you, Matt. Also, if you want to support the channel and get access to my version of the Book of Book audiobook for free, click the join button and become a member and you will also get access to weekly Q&As 
and the exclusive Coffee Cast podcast. Well, we will answer those questions. Now that we've had that out of the way, let's begin. A better question is, when will you leave the sphere? Well, the thing is, in all honesty, am I really in it? Am I really in it? Because I kind of like doing this, where it's like, I'm mostly, this is also my strength training thing. But I like the core concept of self-development as a whole. And the thing we discussed today is about job interviews. That really doesn't... Now, is it part of the manosphere? Yes. Yes, it is, because it has to do with male self-development. Sphere adject... Ad... You, sorry, my, my English today is failing. <laughs> Adjacent. Sphere fringe. That could be. Steps around the sphere, offers useful advice, and bans a lot of people. Just, hey, hey, ho, ho, ho. I never banned. I never banned. I time out. Sorry. I time out people. I don't ban them. I time them out. And my timeouts are well-deserved. Avid. <laughs> no, but will I leave? Well, I don't think so, because I really enjoy the fitness stuff. I mean, I have my personal training services as like Jack Napier and I'm really happy with it and I'm very happy with the guys who are now getting results with it so here and there the topics will dabble because I like to talk about a lot of these things all around but fitness and strength training is my expertise it's like jack of all traits master of one and that is supposed to be the original quote, by the way. So I've heard. Where it's like, yeah, I'm kind of am a jack of all trades. Like, I know a little bit about the dating thing. I know a little bit about the finance thing. I know a little bit about the whole, uh, like, what we're doing now. Like, the corporate thing, and blah, blah, blah. But my main focus and my main expertise will always be strength training. It just is. Because I love it. Like, I don't get why it is so hard for people just to lift weights, to make a habit out of it. Well, I, I kind of do know why, but we're going to talk about that on Thursday. We're going to talk about that on Thursday. And it's a bit of a, um, it, it's, it's a bit harsh where it's like, why you will never be ripped. But it is true. I, I've through the years i've seen so many people where it's like oh i want to be ripped but blah 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 it's like no you don't like you probably don't want it it's like because if you did it's not that hard to get it you just need to be patient and thank you phil phil is a, a former client of mine as well he knows his fitness very well Difference he really knows and is not flexing or putting on a show. That makes the difference. I appreciate that, Phil. I really appreciate that. Thanks. Damn. See? So, like, because of comments like that, I don't think I'm going to leave the YouTube thing. Because I really enjoy it. And there is, like, there are people asking for it. Because the fitness industry, and I've said this before, you think. The manosphere is bad. The fitness industry is way worse. And what's even worse than that might be fitness in the manosphere. It's like, holy shit. Some roided up jack dudes doing like uh, cable flies or whatever. Like, I know my fitness. It's like, dude. Dude. <sighs> Except for Drew Bay. Drew Bay is awesome. Like, don't get me wrong. Drew Bay is pretty awesome. So yeah, but I have had, I have former clients of certain fitness experts in the sphere. And uh, yeah, I was appalled by the schedule. I was appalled by the schedule, which was nothing more than occupational therapy. So yeah, 
because that's the thing too. Like, what is your schedule? Is your schedule actually effective, or is it just going to the gym because of going to the gym kind of thing? Your schedule needs to be something that you don't need to get motivated for. Where it's like, if you have a favorite TV show, do you need to get motivated to do that? No. No, you don't. So with my training, I'm not going to sit there and say, this is the best thing and that is the best thing and that is the best thing. Stan Efforting, quote, what's the best schedule? The one that you can follow. But I'm going to figure out what the best thing for you to follow is. What's the best diet? The one that you can follow. Can you expect somebody to never eat cookies and ice cream again? No, but we are going to find a way that you can eat them in a responsible manner and still enjoy this and reach your fitness goals. That's what this is all about. And yeah, every now and then I like to dabble in the manosphere stuff where it's like, yeah, why has dating become so horrible even if you're jack tan, juicy as fuck? Uh, what is happening to the uh, what is happening to society and things like that? Which I think is very interesting. Like, why do movies suck these days? A lot of them. Well, that's the whole feminine imperative part. I do think it is, well, yeah, part of it. I am not going to go Matthew Hussey on you guys. Or uh, what's his name? The guy from I Hope They Serve Beer in Hell. Where it's like, they used to be red pill and now it's like, no, the red pill is toxic. I'm not going to pull that one on you. It's like, oh, the red pill is toxic now. Jack Napier is no longer red pill. I'm leaving the manosphere. It's like, no, no, in all honesty, I don't think the red pill is toxic. Like with a lot of things, a lot of people misinterpret it, misinterpret things. And those people are toxic. But in general, I think the red pill whole praxeology and all the Reddit and Rolo's books are very beneficial. Speaking of Rolo, I watched Rolo's new show. And I really enjoyed it. They suck because you're not their customer. <laughs> well, it could be. But I watched Rolo's new show and I really enjoyed it. I haven't watched, like, I've watched the first half. I'm sorry, Rolo. It's it's long. Bah. But I really enjoyed it. I thought it was fun. I actually thought it was entertaining. I'm like, okay, so this is what Fresh and Fit was supposed to be. Like, the girls were pleasant. They had fun. They were entertaining. And the conversation was actually like valuable. And then guys were shitting up the chat like, these girls are made of plastic. Where it's like, dude. Dude. Really? They're not real. They're made of plastic. It's like, wow. <sighs> Sigh. This is why the 10 does not exist, people. Because like green light. Let's say green light. This guy here. Let's say he claims his girlfriend is a 10. I will find you guys who will who will ask you if she's a guy. Green light, no offense, no offense. The, I mean, but even if she it really is a 10, there will always be some loser out there. There will always be some loser out there who will say, oh, she looks like blah, blah, blah. It's like, dude, you're never going to appease everybody. So why even bother? Say so, yeah. People. Acton man. I do lift. My muscles are fine, but my tendons are cracking around my elbows when I do move up and down after I work out. Should I worry about it? Well, physical therapist. Acton man, this is something I even tell my clients. I am not a medical professional, nor should you ask a stranger on the internet for medical advice. I'm a personal trainer. I can help you create a better lifestyle and a good schedule, and I can help you with your diet plan. But when your tendons are actually hurting and like cracking, then you need a grade up where it's like you need a physical therapist. And I would advise you to look for a physical therapist and ask him about it. Also, I am not there right now, so I could not expect uh, inspect the tendons either. Neither am I like certified for that. And 20 years younger than me. Yeah, see, and that's what it's about. Green light. Are you happy with her? Good. 
That's what it's about. Jack, why don't you show receipts? Why should I? I care about it for me. Uh, what's up with that lady? I seen Ryan tweet some screenshot from his comments. I want to be rejected by real women or something like that. No, not a plastic woman. Yeah, it's like, oh no, women who... Look. <laughs> Do men care, care about... Um, Okay, let me let me rephrase this. Let me rephrase this. But I guess you wouldn't have seen that tweet. Hey, Jack. Tom, you know I can ban you, right? I can ban you too. You will know how it feels. <laughs> Kidding. Okay, let me give you an example. So years ago, and I told you this story before, years ago, we had a social gathering of a friend, acquaintance of ours. He was the friend. And um, there was one guy who had his girlfriend with him. And his girlfriend had makeup on. And she did a good job. My honesty, that was like, you know what? She looks great. She looks great. Uh, blonde dyed hair, uh, foundation, had the eyelashes, blah, blah, blah. No, nothing done on her face, uh, as in nothing done with her face. Like she didn't have like the lips and blah, 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 which can be nice. I've I've seen w girls who have like the, the tuckered up lips, but it's not too much. But I've also seen girls who are like the really big lips where I'm kind of like, there are men out there who like that. It is just not my preference. But that's it. It's not like she's less real. But um, Scrawny Ginger Beta, who I told you guys about, who doxed me to his wife. Fucking pathetic loser. He was sitting next to me. He was sitting next to me. And uh, all of a sudden, he scooted over. And he's like, look at her. How could you like a Barbie doll like that? Meanwhile, his fat wife is next to him. So I look at him. I'm like, you wish. You wish, my friend. I think she looks great. But it kind of tells you something where it's like the guys who complain about girls being plastic or whatever. Look, cope. I'm just saying it's a cope. Tristan Tate. Even though I thought it was a dick move, where he showed a photo of his girls and Ryan's uh, old lady, and he was hammering on now Ryan's old lady, blah, blah, blah. I thought it was an absolute dick move. Like, if you don't like Ryan, say something about Ryan. Don't go for his wife, okay? And the other way around as well. If you don't like Tristan, don't go after his girls. It's like, you, you don't do that. There is honor amongst men, you know? Same thing as that, that fat kid in Brazil, where it's like, he went after Rolo's wife. Like, fuck off, mate. <laughs> really? But okay, where was I? Um, Tristan Tate posted a po picture of one of his girls. And the comments were just like, oh, she's ugly. She looks like a blah, 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 and this and that. And it's like, really? You take the time out of your day to shit on another man's woman. Like, you don't touch another man's money. You don't touch another man's food. And you don't touch another man's wife. Okay? Just don't be a pathetic waste of skin. If the girls at Rolo's show are not your cup of tea, then the, you're not your cup of tea. Oh, no. That doesn't mean they're fake. Oh, but they had plastic surgery done. So? They're still a human being. <laughs> I had braces. It wasn't my natural stance of teeth. My fake. It's like, really? I shave. <laughs> oh, but you didn't have a doctor. But no, I had an orthodontist. So, aren't orthodontist doctors? I think it's a bit sad. I think it's a bit sad. Like there was one of those girls that wasn't my cup of tea either in appearance. I thought it was a bit too much. What's a, but she's not fake. Like you can have a conversation with her. Just because she's not your type doesn't mean they're fake. Oh, no, she cares about her appearance. I have tattoos. Am I fake now? My God, guys, am I real? I don't know. 
say it's all bullshit. It's all a cope, and it's all weird. Yeah, yeah, doing the work or getting shot down. It's like, you know, some of these guys are real creeps. I wouldn't mind meeting them in real life because they're weird. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I've even I've had that, like, doing this YouTube thing. I've had stalkers. Well, not, not real stalker, stalker, but, like, guys who would, like, keep calling me on Instagram and things like that. It was fucking weird. It really was weird. Like, keep popping up in my DMs. Why don't you respond? Why don't you respond? It's, like, fucking weird. It is weird to the bone, guys. Really fucking weird. But oh well. That was my adventure. But um, what was I saying? Yeah, I like Rolo's new show. I like I like the concept. Where it's like, it's not holding women accountable. It's like, hey, we have these ideas here and we'd like to have your experience. Instead of, brah, 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 white claw, throw, go Frank Castle, or whatever they say. I don't know. But yes, that was it. I think you should check out Rolo's new show because I enjoyed it. Also, I think you should become a member because when you become a member and click the join button, you will get access to the Book of Book audiobook narrated by Semwa for free. Saw what I did there, Avid? Saw what I did there? Semwa. And for the uh, members right now, Go to the membership area, go to the community tab, and you should be able to find it there. And then you will be able to listen to it. Um, and that's it from me. I hope you enjoyed. Please hit the like button, subscribe if you haven't, comment down below your thoughts of this show, and I will see you Tuesday. See you then. Bye-bye. Tot scenes. Oh, wait. <coughs> Look, subscribe to Jack's channel, you tight asses. It's free. It's a click of a button, and it helps this man who you're watching. If you're enjoying this content, then subscribe.